Good morning. It is Monday, May 12th. Um, it's already gorgeous outside, 71. It's funny how I remember pointing to my cell phone showing that it's like 5 degrees or whatever, 6 degrees outside. Lovely, 71. Um, I have some dried mango I'm enjoying right now. Um, I had a weird sore throat issue overnight. I'm pretty sure it's allergies because I don't feel yucky otherwise. So I'm just going to keep drinking lots of fluids today, hoping that that kind of flushes things out. Um, I need to drink lots of fluids anyway for my kidneys. And then I'm thinking of putting this nail polish on today. It's the Broadway Nails in Easter Annie. I just have a base coat on for now. And, um, yeah. I've seen, I've gone out to see the girls, no eggs. I gave them a fresh layer of um, shavings so they can have a nice cushy place to hang out and lay their eggies, gave them food, um, refilled their water, fed the little chicks, the dogs, the cat, and now I'm feeding myself. So I think what I'm going to do today is um, have some tea instead of coffee. Um, I'm feeling like tea, so maybe mint tea. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm not going to drink it hot because when you have a sore throat, you really shouldn't um, have extreme temperature changes. Really, really cold or really, really hot. Um, it just It's too shocking to the tissue. It should really be kind of middle of the road. So I need to get rid of some of the vases of those flowers that I had because they're ready to go. And I'm hoping that the empty ones will be a clue to my husband to say, hey, I would love some more. So I don't believe he has a full day today. Um, they had, uh, they were very, very busy last week because of Mother's Day deliveries. I think he worked um, full day on Friday for the first time in some time. He was even offered to work on Saturday, which he turned down, obviously. Um, luckily, it's optional. Not, it wasn't mandatory. They found plenty of coverage. So... <clears throat> I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to talk today, but I just want to catch up and let you know that, uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's Monday. Um, I already have things planned. Um, so I'm going to look up a couple of recipes. I have, I'm going to make a, like a wheat berry salad for um, Meatless Monday. And I think I have cucumbers, parsley, lemon, make it like fresh, kind of like a tabbouleh with lots and lots of parsley. We have pita bread if we want to put it on that. Um, otherwise, we could just eat it as salad, um, either either over um, hearts of romaine or just you know in a bowl by itself. So um, I did run this past Polly because I'm always kind of cautious about trying something new, but he seemed to game, so that's what I'm gonna do. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's one of those ancient grains, and I think I'm gonna cook it. Um, sometime during the day rather than when, just meal prep at night because I want to make sure it cools because I think I would prefer a uh, cool salad because I believe it's supposed to reach 80 something today. Let me just take a quick look. Um, yesterday was spectacular. The weather was as though it was custom ordered and um, yeah, I think it's supposed to reach a high of 82 around 4. So, with a light breeze and a uh, low of 66 tonight. And tomorrow's going to be, oh, tomorrow's going to be a little cooler. But that's good. Um, what I think I might do, see it's already 72 now. Um, what I might do if I get all my prep work done for um, tonight's dinner is um, take care of my seedlings during lunch. Since now I have a table sitting outside and I could do it all outside without having to bring the uh, soil inside the house, which is always makes a big mess no matter how how careful you try to be. So I'm going to pull my seed packets out. I also have some seeds that I saved from last year. Um, I have um, a fancy red pepper seed, not red pepper, was it yellow pepper? I don't remember now what color pepper it was, but I saved the entire um, cap with all the seeds. So I'm going to plant, you know, um, start those up 
and then uh, probably start a few herbs like dill because we love dill and dill does not seem to come back in the garden parsley does but dill does not so it has to be planted every year so that's a quick little overview of what I have planned on my agenda today uh, now I'm gonna go make myself some tea and enjoy a few more pieces of my dehydrated mango so the nails are done, well, one hand, as you know, because I have to take pictures. So I really like this color. It's almost coming through as blue. Again, I don't know if I need to white balance my camera, but it's called um, Easter Annie, and it's um, Broadway Nails, and I got it from um, Dollar General, and it was eight, um, $1, although... Dollar General has all different dollar increments. So, yeah. And I forgot to write in my uh, gratitude journal last night, so I'm going to do that now before I forget. And then I'll do my right hand. And um, I think they're all set. I put such feet. So this is two coats. And no cleanup. So I try to be as careful as I can, but, you know, we'll see how long these last with the gardening season now. So I thought I'd share with you. And um, again, for those of you who don't follow, who have Pinterest, uh, Pinterest, who have Instagram, who don't already follow me, I always sneak peek things throughout the day on there first. So there you go. I decided to have my tea outside. This thermal mug. Dogs are out playing. Chicks are chickens are eating. Chester is. Probably gonna come with his chocolate to me any second now. After he kills it. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, bleeding hearts are coming out. Let me see if I can zoom in. Look at, look at my vintage stoop. God, that stuff's falling apart. But yeah, bleeding hearts are out. I'll go take some pictures later. He just keeps trying to rip up his chucker. Oh, let me show you the table. There's the hexagon table and chairs and umbrella. Oh, and I need to go take a picture of that. Um, that um, pot right there. Mom mentioned that she really likes it, so I think I'm going to send Dad a picture because he was wondering what to get her for her birthday. So, uh, I have two of those. And apparently she wants them for their house in Florida. I hear the Chihuahua. Oh, hopefully their tags come soon. I should check. Uh, no crying, Chester. I should check. I love how green things are getting, although we absolutely need a mow trim. All right, I better put the camera down and play with Chester for a bit. Okay. Just as I was about to share the story of my disturbing, very realistic dream from last night, or from the day before yesterday, um, the one of our neighbors decided to mow the lawn, so I came inside. I was going to share it outside. So um, I did one more thing to my nails. I just added a layer of or a coat of this um, Nicole for OPI by OPI Pixie Glitter. Looks like there's moons and stars, but I don't have any of the moons on here. So I'm just going to aim the camera at my little bear so you could enjoy something pretty. And you'll hear Chicks and Moses. Oh my gosh, my eyes are watering like crazy. So, the morning of Mother's Day, I woke up to an extremely realistic dream, which kind of left me um, a little shook up, in part because it was so real. It played out like a movie. Um, there were consecutive scenes. It was in color. It was vivid with um, vibrancy, and um, I even was able to discern sense. It's very hard to explain why, but I guess our brains are capable of incredible things. 
So, um, Mother's Day was Sunday, and when I woke up Sunday morning, fresh from that dream, I must have just had it, just finished having it. I had to lay in bed just for a few minutes to kind of bring myself back to reality, to wake, you know, to uh, walking life, to this realm. Um, the dream was, and this is totally paraphrasing because I can't possibly go into all the details. I They're still quite vivid, but essentially the dream was that um, I had died and I, it was being explained to me why or what led up to it. So it's as though the dream started in reverse. I saw the end of the dream first, and then everything that led up to the um, ending uh, played out next. Um, I had a daughter, which I do not, and while in my care, she drowned. And because of that drowning, I was inconsolable and tried to come to grips with, the, with what has happened and ended up, apparently her body was missing, ended up searching for her body and found another child who at first I thought was not alive either but turned out to be alive so a child was rescued but it was not my child and in the end after all of that was explained in the dream um, Pauline and I were suddenly alive again and were basically told that if we had children or if we had a child, that child would perish and it would be our fault and that's why we don't have children and that's why we're alive. So I'm sure it was because of whatever anxiety I was having about Mother's Day and you know, my sister is blessed with two kids. My mom had two kids. I have four-legged kids, which is obviously not the same. I share my love with them and with everyone who comes into my life. Who, by the way, now I, I'm better at only doing that for those who deserve it, who I feel deserve it, um, because not everybody does. Um, but it was, it was very... It, it was vibrant, it was vivid, it was disturbing. So I had to put on my best face to, you know, go to see my sister and my mom. And we did have a wonderful afternoon. It was just, it was really sweet. Nobody argued, nobody fought. There was no, you know, no drama. It was fabulous. Which, for those of you who have family, you know that... That's not always a guarantee, but it was very nice. We did really have a nice time, and the weather was fabulous. And Pauline and I came home, and we did some stuff around the house. We, you know, got the table for my parents. So it was a very productive day, but that that dream has lingered with me the entire day. It did, that overwhelming feeling obviously dissipated pretty quickly, um, because I was able to, you know, function as a human being. But there are dreams that absolutely impact you more than you would ever have anticipated. I recall waking up from dreams where they felt so real that the relief of knowing that it was just a dream was enough to make me cry. And I'm not a weepy girl. Like, I'm not a highly emotional um, individual. So, yeah, that's the dream that I had. Um... There was obviously a lot more detail, and again, I can't I can't convey effectively enough. I think the fact that it it was like a movie, you know, scene to scene. There were you know other participants. There was you know vivid explanation. It was when I discovered the child, somebody else's child, who ended up being you know was revived. It was in a water filled with seaweed just 
like the smell of the seaweed, the overwhelmingly real. Felt very, very real. All right, now that you all know I'm kind of a Looney Tune, well, not a Looney Tune, it just, my brain has a difficult time shutting down as it is when I sleep. So when I have these really vivid, memorable, colored dreams, color scented dreams, it takes me a while to kind of come back to, <laughs> come back to reality. Although having a beautiful day yesterday to enjoy with family was just the right way to do it. So there's my little teddy that Polly brought me home after Valentine's Day that I put some bling on and a little purple ribbon. And I'm gonna I'm still enjoying my tea, although that um to go cup it keeps things very, very hot. I'm gonna have to take the lid off so I can actually drink it. My eye is watering, it's like stingy, burny, like maybe I have jalapeno pepper in it, but I know I, know I don't because I haven't touched jalapenos. I even have to take my glasses off, I just can't, I don't know what's going on. It has to be allergies because I've never felt this like yucky without being sick, sick, and I don't think I'm sick. I think it's just whatever's floating in the air and my car's covered in pollen, so that would explain it. So, yeah, I'm going to stop talking now and go drink some tea. Can you hear the dog snoring behind me? Or the chicks in the kitchen? So here's my tea. My eye just won't stop watering and did my nails. And don't I look like I have color? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Polly told me my eyes are very big. I said, to better to see you with. So I'm getting ready to drop the kamut, which is the um, uh, uh, karasin wheat, karasin wheat, traditional grain of Egypt. I've had it soaking for the last six hours, six, seven hours or so in some water, so that's a cup. And I have three cups of water boiling, so I'm going to add that. The only thing I have in the water is three smashed garlic cloves and a little bit of salt. Like a teaspoon, maybe. There it is. It's added. And I've turned it to medium. And I'm going to lid it. And it's going to cook for about half hour. And then I will taste it to see the tenderness of the grain. Uh, soaking uh, lets you cook it for less. If you did not get a chance to soak overnight or for like so six or seven hours, then you can cook it for uh, 45 to 60 minutes. So I'm going to check it in about an hour. But in the meantime, I'm going to chop up a bunch of vegetables um, into a bowl, including cucumbers, scallions, lots of parsley, and make a, like a lemon um, vinaigrette with some grapeseed oil and lemon juice and lemon zest. So I'll show you that. While the wheat grains are happily boiling, bubbling away, um, I made the rest of the salad. So I first started off by making the dressing in the bottom of the bowl. Consists of a few tablespoons of grapeseed oil, the juice of one lemon, zest of the lemon, one zested um, clove of fresh garlic, uh, five uh, scallions, and seven little cucumbers. And the little cucumbers, they were English cukes, baby cukes, and a couple of pickling cucumbers, which weren't all good from start to finish, so I gave the rest of them to Mosey to eat, so he loved it. And then salt, black pepper, and that's it, mixed it up. So now I just have to wait for the grains to get finished. And oh, quarter cup of chopped flat leaf parsley. Lots of flavor, lots of uh, freshness. It'll be herbaceous, it'll be like a um, Kamut uh, Tabuli. That's what I'm going to call it. Kamut Tabuli. So that's the salad. The uh, Kamut Tabuli. I cooked the Kamut for about 40 minutes because I didn't um, it was not soaked overnight just for about 6 hours and it has a nutty flavor without being hard. What you want to make sure is that the grains are not hard. So I mixed everything in while it was still hot because that way it absorbs all of the juices from the vinaigrette. So I'm just going to serve them up in bowls and that's going to be our meatless Monday dinner. So I'm going to take some pictures, pop them on Instagram, Facebook, 
If you don't follow me there already, there's link. there are links below. And there's Moses thinking he's going to get something. Are you going to get something, something? Maybe. All right, so that's going to be it for me for today. Don't forget to thumbs up. It's free for you and it helps me out. Ooh, my nails. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everyone.